Hi, it's Lee from the Japanese Wood Gardens. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can help maintain a safe level of dissolved oxygen in your pond and prevent the unnecessary suffering or even the death of your fish. Fish breathe by passing oxygen-rich water through the open mouth and feathery gill filaments. The gill filaments absorb oxygen from the water and move it into the bloodstream. At the same time, waste carbon dioxide in the blood passes out through the gills back into the water. Problems occur when the fish require more oxygen than can be extracted from the water. An inexpensive test kit can be used to check the oxygen levels in your pond. It is a good idea to carry out a regular test, particularly during the warmer summer months when the fish are very active and the water will contain lower levels of dissolved oxygen. The warmer the water gets, the less oxygen it can retain. Other biological processes, such as the oxidization of ammonia in the filter and the breakdown of organic material in the pond, further exasperate this problem. The best time to carry out a water test is first thing in the morning when the oxygen level will be at its lowest. Signs suggesting low oxygen can include inactive or lethargic fish. They may hang around beside the water returns or get anxious and jump out of the water. In extreme situations, the fish can literally be seen gasping for air at the surface. If swift action is not taken, then it will not be long before the fish die. So how can we avoid this? In order to maintain levels of dissolved oxygen in the water, you need to circulate it and agitate its surface. Good flow eliminates dead spots and brings water from the bottom of the pond up to the surface. At the surface, you need a disturbance. The more you break up and agitate the surface, the more effectively you can expel the carbon dioxide and introduce fresh oxygen. A reliable water circulating pump must be used to operate the filter. If the pump becomes blocked or the filter is obstructed, you must take action to restore it quickly. Fountains and waterfalls will help provided there is plenty of movement and agitation. A little spray or trickle of water though is unlikely to make much difference. You need something that gets the water moving and breaks up the surface. So what about those pond plants? They're the best way to get the oxygen in, right? Well, actually, no. Plants do release oxygen during the daylight hours, but at night time, this process stops and they actually release carbon dioxide. So you cannot rely on the plants and too many plants are potentially a contributing factor to the low oxygen. Solar powered pumps are, in my opinion, worse than useless. They are so underpowered and so unreliable that they have no place in any pond. They will also not work during the night time, so they will not be on when the oxygen levels are at their lowest. Maintaining a good level of dissolved oxygen is a critical requirement to the well-being of your fish. Nothing kills fish faster than lack of oxygen. Unfortunately, this does happen on an all too regular basis. A good solution to this problem is to install a dedicated air compressor. Air pumps are very simple to install. They consume minimal amounts of electricity and require little or no maintenance. They are often sold complete with the airline and stones providing everything that you need straight out of the box. In an emergency situation, such as an electrical power outage or pump failure, you might need to get oxygen into the pond fast. To achieve this, turn on your hose pipe and spray the water hard at the surface. It can make the difference between the life or death of your fish, so do not delay, even if the water is coming straight from the supply and will not be dechlorinated. It is possible to use hydrogen peroxide to temporarily increase the oxygen if you have a bottle of it in your treatment store. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like what you see, then subscribe to the channel and click the bell thing. It's bye for now from Lee at the Japanese Water Gardens.